Hey guys, Jacob Wheeler here. If I have one rod to bass fish with, this one's going to be it. So we're gonna dive into it right now. Hopefully y'all learn something. There's some things, I sort of went back and forth on this, but day in and day out, this rod that I have in my hand does the majority of my jam damage as far as multiple techniques, okay? Obviously I have a spinnerbait on it right now, um, but and this is a casting rod. Now, if I'm gonna go uh, on a spinning, that's a different story, but if you're looking at trying to buy one casting rod combination, um, this is the one I would recommend. A seven foot is the length, medium heavy, okay? And the reason behind this is it gives you the most, oper I probably have, let me see, I probably can, I think about 30 different techniques that I can fish with this one rod, okay? And the key with it, more than anything, is having enough tip in the rod, but then your length, it allows you to have enough length where you're not too short, um, but you, where, you know, you can still catch some fish out of good, you know, heavier cover, but then I'll also, you know, you're short enough to roll cast, and that's sort of my mindset behind it. So if I'm fishing ponds or I'm fishing lakes, if I'm in the river, you know, that's a scenario. And so like, as far as techniques that I can throw on this seven foot medium heavy, I like a parabolic bend. And what a parabolic bend is, is it's not fast, it's a moderate bend. So it slowly bends and that, and what that allows for me to do, I lose way less fish per a technique and most any technique because of a parabolic bend because it springs them out of the cover. With a fast tip, what happens is it, it almost, when it loads up quick, then it springs back quick. So when you don't, like you hook a fish, your tension on your rod will end up like, it, it'll it'll go slack. When you ever hear you keep tension on the fish, keep tension on the fish, a parabolic bend rod allows you to keep tension on them a little bit better than a fast tip. And so it's most, most techniques, I'm using a parabolic bend in my rod. Now, of course, with this rod being a seven foot medium heavy, a spinnerbait is definitely one that I would recommend using. A vibrating jig is another great one. Uh, a smaller Texas rig saw plastic up to probably a quarter ounce. You know, you could use with a seven foot medium heavy, a uh, walking bait. Um, I'm throwing like, you know, top waters. My, this is my buzz bait rod. This is also my single swim bait rod with like a finesse swim bait with 12 pound line when I'm fishing it out deeper. In addition to that, I'm trying to think, you see, it really, I, I use it for so many different things. like throwing jigging spoons out offshore, throwing a jigging rod out, out offshore, throwing a one ounce spinner bait, throwing a three eighths ounce spinner bait, uh, throwing a lipless crank bait in scenarios, certain scenarios where, you know, so, so it gives you even a swim jig, you can, you can dress this rod up and you can dress it down. And what I mean by that is you're eight, with a seven foot medium heavy for the most part, as long as it has a parabolic bend, you, you can really like, if I wanna put a, a swim jig with this, I can put braid on this rod with a swim jig and I can make the overall the overall action of this rod work well in heavy cover with a swim jig because the braid sort of compensates for the rod. You see what I'm saying? So four carbon, you know, it might not be heavy enough with four carbon to fish heavy cover with a swim jig, but if I throw braid, it has less, it has no stretch where four carbon or monofilament has stretch, then I change the overall setup and how the rod reacts because there's no stretch and I get those fish out of the heavy cover as well. I've even caught fish on a frog when I've only had one rod in my truck, caught several nice fish on a frog with this rod right here as well. So the nice thing about it is, you know, seven foot gives you the best of both worlds. And I think it's like the perfect combination. So if if you're like most people, you can't afford or don't, don't wanna buy 15, 20 different rods, pick up one that does almost everything if you can. Now you're not gonna, maybe it's not gonna be the best cranking rod. That's the one thing in my, I wouldn't say like a seven foot medium heavy, uh, moderate actions, you're probably not gonna be the best crankbait rod. Can I throw a square ball on this? Absolutely I can. But I'll also offset it, okay, this is another thing. I'll, 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 like I said with braid, I'll offset that with monofilament because monofilament stretches a little bit more than four from most do. Um, I will actually use if I'm, if I'm in a position where I only have one rod, I'll use monofilament if I'm trying to throw a square bill on this rod because then it has more stretch and therefore the action is closer to what I would want for a crankbait. So I'm able to sort of play the play the mood of the rod depending on the line size, the line diameter, all of those things to help you guys get more out of your one rod selection if you only can have one. I mean, this one's done a lot of work for me. I've caught a lot of fish on it, but it's, it's definitely something um, there's a lot of different rods out there on the market, but I, and you don't have to, I'm not, not saying you have to select my rod. 
I'm just saying if I suggest one, seven foot medium heavy, moderate action, you cannot go wrong with this one. And, and if you do me a favor, you drop a comment below, let me know what your favorite one rod that you have in your lineup is, because there might be something that I need to adjust. Maybe I might be a, a rod selection or a rod size. I need to switch it up and you guys might help me just do that.